Rebuilding a Stuart 10V steam engine. This is part one. Examination of the engine and the Mammoth flywheel definitely has to go. I show my method of straightening the crankshaft, followed by making a mounting base and fitting a new flywheel. I've been wanting to do a series about rebuilding a Stuart 10V for a while. The main problem was I didn't have a Stuart 10V that was suitable for rebuilding. This particular engine would appear to be a really good candidate for a rebuild. As I often find, there is evidence that more than one person has worked on this engine. I would think that the original builder wasn't the person who made a thorough mess of the engine later on. And I would also hazard a guess that the person who fitted the Mammoth flywheel wasn't very good either. The very first job is to get rid of the Mammoth flywheel. What I'm doing here is heating the flywheel with my small Proxon blowtorch. I think it's probably just stuck onto the crankshaft. It didn't take much heat to destroy the bond and here I'm removing the flywheel using a pair of surgical forceps. And the engine is looking better already, but as is very common with these engines, the crankshaft is bent. The engine actually feels a bit lumpy when I rotate the crankshaft, I can't do it with my hands, because there's a tight spot and when I apply some compressed air it doesn't start. This has nothing to do with the fact that there isn't a flywheel, these double 10 vs run perfectly well without one. There is a mechanical problem. I do not recommend trying what you're about to see. This procedure is not quite as easy as it looks in the video. This technique is often used in the lathe to straighten bent shafts. It requires a good sense of rhythm and plenty of practice to master. Please don't try this at home. The crankshaft is now a lot straighter than it was. I'll have another go at this later on. So it's easy to see how much straighter the crankshaft is. I've slowed the engine down using the video editor to a quarter speed. The bottom end of this engine is well made. It all went a bit wrong when the hideous piping was fitted. I have some proper Stuart 10V piping, so I'll probably fit this to the engine. Here's the drilled out Mammoth flywheel, I've put this in a box of scrap flywheels. When you fit the correct size flywheel to a Stuart 10V steam engine, it's too big. I've demonstrated this in past videos. So before I work on this one, I need to make a mounting base, because I don't want to bend the crankshaft a second time. Making the base is a very simple job, but I don't have a piece of wood the right size. I do have some 5 minute epoxy resin, and a few of these mahogany offcuts, so I'm going to stick three of these together to make a mounting base for the engine. This base isn't going to be cosmetic, it's just to allow me to work on the engine and hopefully prevent the flywheel from bending the crankshaft for a second time. I spread the epoxy resin on two of the blocks, then I make sure the adhesive is fully spread and I stick them all together. I put them on the steel plate that I have as the boiler mount for the steam plant that I'm building to keep them firmly in position until the adhesive cures. While the epoxy resin is curing, now's the time to look at this mess on the cylinders. How anyone can do a job like this is completely beyond me. I think though, with a bit of work, I can make this engine good. Thankfully, the inlet and exhaust holes are all threaded and I have a genuine Stuart set of fixings and pipes. I'll screw in a couple of the unions to give you an idea what I'm going to do. The existing bolt holes in the steam chests will need plugging, but that's a simple job. What I'm doing here is checking that the piping that I have fits the engine, and it seems to be okay. I mentioned earlier that there's a tight spot when I turn the crankshaft. I think someone has over tightened the bolts on the big ends. This is very common and yes they are extremely tight, almost close to shearing off. It's most important that small parts like this, especially when they're holding soft pieces of metal together like gun metal, are not over tightened because the entire gun metal block distorts and then you will get a tight spot. Using a small spanner, I slackened off each of the nuts and then I just nipped them up without over tightening. And guess what? The tight spot disappeared entirely. 
The job of fitting the piping is quite a long way off. I'm temporarily refitting the inlet piping. I'll leave the outlets just as they are. I can see from this clip that I'm going to have to do some reprofiling of the edge of the cylinders, but that's not the hardest thing to do. I will also clad the cylinders how they're supposed to be. By this time the epoxy resin had set. This is what it looks like after a clean up on the belt sander. I sat the engine on top of this wooden base and drew a line on it. And now it's over to the bandsaw, running at double speed, to cut along the line. I should have said the video is running at double speed, not the bandsaw. I cleaned up the freshly cut edge using my belt sander. With the engine sat on the mounting base, I used my deep hole marker to mark the positions where I need to drill the holes to bolt the engine to the mahogany. I'm using a twist drill which is just under tapping size for 5BA. And why am I doing this? Well, wood is not metal, and I want the 5BA threads in this block to be tight. After drilling the four holes all the way through the block, I threaded the holes approximately halfway down using a 5BA tap. By doing it this way, the threaded part will guide the bolt which will then cut its own thread in the mahogany. And this way the threads will be tight. It's perfectly acceptable to thread mahogany or any other hardwood to take standard bolts. You can make the threads even stronger if before you fit the bolts you pour some of the thin cyanoacrylate adhesive or superglue into the holes and then re-tap them. But these are plenty strong enough to hold this engine in position. Now the engine is elevated well above the bench, I can fit a new flywheel. I just happen to have one in a box of flywheels. With the flywheel in position, it's time to give the engine a run. The timing isn't very well adjusted, pretty much like me. So as you're about to see, I had to give it a push. And that's it for this episode. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.